Yo, it's Guido coming at you with the Tactics Talk. Something different, fellas. We've talked about it a couple times on Sunday on Coffee Talk. Got my coffee, by the way. It's a delicious, nice little Saturday afternoon, and it's raining outside, so we're going to game. Ah, let's face it, I'm going to game anyway. But anywho, <laughs> I have an excuse today. We'll call it an excuse for today. Panzer Corps II, so a little bit different. Obviously, there's still tanks involved right here, but this is a... This is a turn-based, hex-based war game. Uh, if, you, if you're old like me and you played these when you were younger, as a kid, you know, the old pen and paper and 15 pounds of instructions on how to play it, rule sets, all kinds of tables, dice rolls, and lots of arguments about the rules. But uh, the computer does it all. That's the beauty right here. There was an old game called Panzer General that this is kind of the spiritual successor to that. It's very similar to that game. If you have played it, then you will find this very familiar. There is a Panzer Corps one or the original, but this is number two. And it has things like little 3D units and all that good stuff. Now we're gonna show you the first battle or the first mission in the campaign where you start with the invasion of Poland. We'll get to that in just a second. There is on this main page here, a tutorial which you can get into and you can do a tutorial campaign which will go through all these or you can go through these basic ideas. I highly recommend doing that. I'll talk about a bit of those as I show you this first mission because that refreshed my memory quite a bit. A lot of the mechanics are very similar to Panzer General. There are similar mechanics to other turn-based war games, hex-based type things. It'll be very, very familiar. If you have not done this before or played this kind of game, I highly recommend it because this is a very it's not necessarily basic because it, it is quite it is quite uh, deep and complex at times but you can you can make it quite basic and learn how to play these games and the nice things about nice thing thing about this kind of game is it's turn based so you can get up and walk away unlike maybe if you're in the middle of a battle in world of tanks you've got 15 minutes and you're kind of stuck there world of tanks is nice because that's only 15 minutes and not two hours but this one especially something in between other games, sit down, play a few rounds and move on. You will lose a chunk of your life if you get into this because this is one of those just one more turn kind of games. But quite complex, quite deep. A couple things about this main page right here. These over here are all the DLCs. By the way, you can get this on Steam. It's about 15 bucks. Well worth it in my opinion. These are DLCs with a lot of different other missions set up, um, campaigns, mini campaigns, all that. Like I said, there's a tutorial, there's a campaign, you can do scenarios. They've got these built right here. I'm assuming that when you buy some of the DLCs, you'll get more uh, scenarios. I'll spit it out in a minute. You got Crete, Fall Vice, End of the Bulls. And these kind of, a lot of times are going to expand the map and do a more specific mission. You might see the same, the same uh, campaign or mission later on in the campaigns, but these really open them up into bigger maps, so pretty cool. But we're going to do the campaign right here. So we'll click on campaign. And we'll start with Poland, although you can start with Barbarossa, North Africa, Kursk, or Italy. Gives you lots of different options. With the Poland campaign, it goes through the whole thing. And what's cool is there's actually a non-historic branch. There's a point at which if you take Moscow, you manage to do that, then you can branch off into some other things that are ahistoric or non-historic. You can take England, you can invade England and, and take London, you can actually invade America. And I went through the whole thing and because I cheated, and we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, I like to enjoy my game and it was kicking my rear. But we'll talk about the ins and outs of that and why I recommend you might want to try that, especially if you're new initially to kind of get an idea for the game. But it does allow you to do that. Or you can stay on the historical track even if you win all of the missions. You can stay on the historical track and then you'll, it'll follow through more of a historical situation that happened. There are other branching areas. There is a point at which after you invade France and you win that one, you can go down to North Africa or you can do the Operation Barbarossa. If you go to North Africa, you're more in the North Africa and taking on the Allies idea. And if you go Barbarossa, you're more obviously on the Eastern Front, mostly against Russia idea. We're gonna start in Poland right here with the very basic. There are difficulty levels down here. I'm keeping it at Colonel. Obviously, as you get higher in there, there's just going to be more enemy units. They're going to be higher quality, whatever else they do to tweak the AI. Understand that in general with these war gamings, war gamings, with these war games, uh, 
you increase the level and the AI cheats, right? That's the way they do it. It just has more stuff, it, it rolls better, it does better, all that kind of stuff. It is what it is. I like playing down here on Colonel, that's fine. If you want to be more aggressive and beat your head into the wall, that's all good, go for it. So we're gonna go ahead and click play. First thing you do is it immediately gives you a choice pulling south, pulling north. It does give a little blurb down here. There's close quarters on the southern route and there's more mobile and open ground on the northern route. We're gonna take pulling south and we're gonna click accept. Loads on in there. And the first thing you can do is name yourself. So we'll be Guido 1212. These are perks, skills, special things. You could actually accept. It'll bring a window up and say, hey, do you really wanna do that? And not have any of these. One of the knocks on this game and I don't really care about it, but is that there are some combinations of these these skills, and then later on you can get some heroes added to some of your units that can make them extremely powerful. I think it makes it interesting. So you could get through this and not pick. Notice there's two selections right here that remain, and what's interesting is you can actually take weaknesses and get more points. There are delayed reinforcements. Cannot use replacements in the middle of a battle. That that's that will hurt that's going to leave a mark right there but now i have four selections over here so all of these are pretty gnarly actually and i think they're all minus well there's a minus three denied air force cannot purchase air units so here's a way right here if you just want to make things more difficult for yourself um, select some things like that but you get two free ones some of these are one some of these are two i don't know if there's any threes over here to be honest uh, what we are going to take is we're going to take liberator that costs two and that's plus 50% prestige for capturing flags. We'll talk about that in a minute. We're just gonna leave it at that so I don't have any weaknesses. This dude right here gives you a little brief. So we've got codename Fall Vice. This would be 1 September in 1939 when the war started right here. So we are going to commence the attack. Should take three months. These are the objective hexes. All right, with the markers around them. The circle means a supply hex. That means if I'm going to get a new unit or upgrade something in the middle of a game, which is more expensive than between missions, I need the circle. But these hexes that have the markers around them in there, there's a couple other hex meanings in there. I think there's secondary objectives as well, which can, which can uh, indicate whether you did well enough on other missions to get some of the branching types of missions but for today we're all we need to do is take these four actually there's a few more i think but these are four of the main ones uh so he's given us the 10th army's forces boom boom secure the crossing right here uh, declaration of war will be a little late <laughs> all right this Kielce area right here. I've not been able to do this before. So he's 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 eager to see what how we do. So we have 15 turns. You can see up the top right, we're on turn one of 15. That's Axis and then the allies go next. So I get the first turn. In follow-on missions, you're gonna be able to place your own units where you want them, and you're probably gonna have some auxiliary units. Right now I have 36 core slots of my army, and you start with what you start with. So I've got down here, I got a Panzer 38 TA. I've got a Panzer 2C, a Panzer 1B. It looks like a Bice, no, Sturm Panzer, which is artillery. I have another artillery, a 7.5, some infantry, a Pioneer infantry. Those are guys that are good at assaulting things that are dug in. Uh, it's called, so I find it here, they call it. Uh, uh, here we go, let's look at this guy. Yeah, he doesn't have it, unfortunately. Oh, there we go. Entrenchment, that's right, entrenchment. So the more entrenched something is, the more defense it has. I've got BF-109s, these are E-models. I've got a DO-17Z. And I do not have, oh, I do have one Stuka. Now what's interesting here is starting with this is a different set of units than if I start on the other branch when I got the two choices. I didn't realize that until just now. This starts with four air units. The other one only starts with three and you don't get the you don't get the strategic bomber. So these are all split out into types of units. You've got infantry, armor, recon, 
anti-tank, artillery, fighters, tactical bombers, strategic bombers, and there might be one other thing in there I've missed, but those are the different types. But you just start with this. Now we've got cavalry up here, obviously early in World War II, the Polish still had cavalry running around. They're actually more capable than you would think. If we click on this, we can see their capabilities over here on the right, how many slots they take. So that's this up here, the core slots, uh, their movement, how far they can see, their range, their initiative. All right, so yeah, these numbers over here are the various power, soft attack, hard attack. We're not gonna dig deep dive into that, but essentially you have attack against armor, attack against uh, soft tech like infantry, you have attack against air attack. So obviously things like AAA would be good against aircraft. Aircraft versus aircraft numbers, it's, every unit is a little bit different. Armor against armor, more or less. And uh, one of the things to think about here is it's it's a bit chess-like in terms of there are some units that do better against other units. Tanks against infantry in the open not dug in are really good. Tanks against dug in infantry in prepared areas are bad. Infantry is better against other infantry. So for example, putting your tank in a forest and being attacked by infantry is extremely bad because there's a close attack number and tanks have bad close attack. There's a lot of things like that. That's by no means an exhaustive list right there. As I said, it's hex based. Each one of these little spots here, this, these white spots are where I can drive. It, there is a fog of war, so I can drive into the fog of war, but I will get ambushed. Say there's a unit here and I'm trying to go here, I'll run into it and potentially get ambushed. So you do have also a zone of control around your vehicles and your people or each unit right there that the enemy can't just walk right by you. Say this cavalry unit wanted to go down here to the southwest, he'd have to go around me, otherwise he'd get stuck in the zone of control which is right here. You can actually set it up to see the hexes as well in the options right there. Doesn't take a lot of power, by the way, on the computers. I have an older laptop that runs it just fine. You can also downgrade some of the settings if you're having issues, but it is not a game that takes a whole lot of resources from your computer, which is nice. All right, so I, I don't have an option on how to set it up. This is basically how I have it. You can see here are the, the points that I have to take. The other flags, you can see the Polish flag right there, those will give you prestige points if you take them. So the recommendation is grab as many of these, if not all of them, as you can on this one map. And this is a pretty small map they have to deal with here. I have 600 prestige. Prestige will give you more troops if, after you take losses. That is more expensive in the middle of a game. In between games, when you refit and rearm and upgrade and everything else, it's cheaper. So in general, you want to try to minimize that in the game, but sometimes you're just going to be stuck. Break, break. I said we talk about that. If you click right here to chat and come down in here to the enter your message area, there are cheats in this game where you can give yourself certain things. The one thing I use, at least early on because it was too frustrating, is one called set any prestige. S-E-T-A-N-Y space prestige and then a number. Put as many points of prestige as you want in there if you don't want to mess around with that. What that allows you to do is to fix your units without worrying about prestige. Now I'm just starting to run somewhere. I'm not going to do that or see how far I can get. Because honestly, the first time I played the campaign, I got five or six in and then I got in between two missions and I realized I just didn't have the prestige to even fix my army, never mind upgrade. So I knew the next mission was just going to be a disaster. And of course, the, the real way that you play the game is with the prestige and you're attempting to do well enough and not lose so many uh, units and numbers and numbers off the units, talk about them, the strength, let's put it that way, that you can move on and you husband your prestige and you grab the right flags and do all that good stuff. You also notice that when I picked my skill, I picked I get an extra 50% prestige from grabbing the flags. That's by design. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I have another run I'm doing right now with that, and we'll see how far I get. And that's part of the challenge, right? You, if you want to do it that way and just see how far you can get, good on you. But if you want to play the game and kind of see how everything works and move along through the missions pretty easily, it's still challenging and interesting, but relatively easy. Do the set any prestige. That's just, that's just my, my uh, thoughts on that. All right. 
Units are of varying strength. The I will tell you that if we look at the Panzer II C, it's not extremely strong. We're talking about an 11 soft attack and 10 hard attack, hard attack. Where we have the Panzer 38T, he's a 12 and 14. So you kind of start to get the idea of how good your various tanks are. The 1B is an 11 and 7 here. So we're going to go ahead and get started. You pick one unit and then you decide where to go. See the little arrow comes out and says where you're going to move them. And let's see if I have a scout car. There we go. Scout cars are nice. They have a lot of movement and they have good vision. They can see far. They also allow you to move in increments, which is very cool. So for example, I can do this and I still have some movement and then I'll do this. All right, so now I have uncovered and there is an anti-tank gun right here. Anti-tank guns are going to be quite vulnerable to infantry, but the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my Stuka, which is an absolute menace early on in the game. And, and as you get better Stukas later in the game, they can be pretty good and you, you get them uh, you get more stars on them. We'll talk about that in a second. But he's going to potentially kill three of them. So the strength of that artillery is 10, and you'll notice that most of your tanks, tanks and units, base strength is 10, although artillery starts as a, or sorry, infantry starts as a base strength of 15. I don't know why, it just does. And this prediction is that I will kill three, which is the green, and lose zero. So let's see what happens. There is some RNG, fellas. I got two, all right? I didn't get three, I got two. You also notice I got some guys down here. They're, they've got the green marker, more Polish guys down here I gotta take out. So I've softened up this thing. Now I've got some good artillery, or infantry, I'm gonna keep calling them artillery. I'm gonna move them up to here. And you'll notice that you get the red mark, you put the cursor over that, and it says I'm gonna get five of them. I might lose one, so let's see what happens here. All right, so if they do get beaten and they also get, uh, the word is not stunned, I'll think of it in just a minute, equal to their remaining number, they will retreat, retreat which is what they did. So let's find somebody to go kill this. We'll just use a fighter. Fighters are good for mopping things up. Now the fighters can do ground attack, which is not very good, but their primary reason is to do air attack but they'll just mop up this artillery unit with this fighter. That's fantastic, that worked very nicely. And so now we've taken this area. Unfortunately, I don't have anything to move there. Now let's do another little soften up maneuver here. We've got artillery we're gonna move. You can see that he can shoot two, that's his range. As they get better, they get up to three or four and five, potentially at least four. They can move one and still shoot, so we'll do that. All right, we didn't, we didn't kill anybody, that's fine. Let's go ahead and soften these guys up a little bit more. We'll take a look at it. Let's see what their entrenchment is. Their entrenchment is three out of eight, which is still pretty high, especially for tanks going in there. So we're just gonna go ahead and see how much entrenchment, I believe we should minus two stun these guys. We did not, yeah, there we go. So we did take off one, suppress, suppression is the word. All right, so we put four suppression on him. And now let's march this infantry down. Well, before we do that, let's put one more artillery shot on them. And we should, we've got them suppressed four. Let's see what we bring it up to here. Six, all right, so we suppress them a little bit more. And we'll march this, this infantry down. Remember, it was a little worse than that before. So we'll attack, we should lose some, but we should put the hurting on them. All right, we got five, they got four of us, and they got pushed out. Their suppression was equal to what was left, so they run away. Now this is where tanks are good at the mop-up phase. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this point. And if you take a look up here at the top with the prestige, we should add prestige when we march down there. 675, that's good, that's worth 50, but remember I have the 50% extra skill, and now minus five, I should kill five of them. If I'm lucky, I'll get a few more, at least one. All right, I got five, and they actually got one of me, so I'm down to nine. You can see I've taken losses, I've lost four strength off of this infantry, I've lost one strength off of the Panzer II C. And now I've gotta kinda of deal with this, these uh, cavalry up here, so we're gonna soften them up with the air, took a few off of them, and we'll sort of pincer this guy. Well, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try to put, well, I'm not gonna be able to do that, unfortunately. 
There is a backwards button, by the way. This is really nice. I can actually go, you know what? I didn't like that move. Let's do that. Here's why. I want to go around here and hit them. So I'll, let's see how that comes out. I only got two of them. They got one of me. That's a bummer. And now I've sort of got them trapped here, fellas, because zones of control are around your units. They're only going to be able to move one. They won't be able to get away. Unless that happens. I was about to say it, but I wanted to see if it would happen. What's funny is because the suppression equaled what was left, they retreat, which also kind of makes them able to get out of your zone of control. It's a little bit annoying, but there you go. And the problem is he can kind of run down here and become a problem. I'll just chuck this out as something. There's so many different things I could, I could cover here, but be very careful about this. My Air Force is stationed at this base. There might have been one down here. If they come in here and hold that base and you don't get rid of them, your Air Force gets destroyed. So be, be, be careful. There's a couple missions where the enemy has paratroopers and I got caught out. The paratroopers went by my front lines, dropped on my bases and killed off most of my Air Force. I don't think it's so bad that you want to station somebody back there, but keep an eye on it. It was super annoying. Also, this does have autosave. It will autosave. You can set it up, but at the default is it will autosave at the beginning and ending of every turn. So if something goes pear-shaped, fellas, just go reload and go after it. All right, if you want to be hardcore, good on you. Go ahead and do so. But if you're just trying to enjoy yourself and have fun, maybe you don't want that kind of silliness to go on. So we're just going to march forward and hit this guy. And we got him. Fantastic. So finally got a high roll. They actually surrendered, looks like. All right. Very nice. Now, this... Uh, actually, I don't know what the next turn is, to be quite honest. It's one of these dudes. Anyway, I do know it's the period. So if you press the period, it will cycle through the guys that you still have moving on. And you can see I'm clicking it, and we do not. So we're going to go to the next turn. Now it is the Polish turn. You see their Air Force comes out and says hello to my infantry. We get a counterattack by their cavalry, which we do okay with. Look at that. He took the airfield, and thank goodness my Air Force was not at that airfield. They're actually at this airfield. So we're going to go ahead and clean these dudes up. Why am I not able to? That's interesting. I don't. Oh, okay. So these guys, I guess, were at that airfield. They moved. I did not know that. That's interesting. So what happened is, I think these two were at that airfield. So instead of crashing, they moved. All right. There must be some, I guess if there's a close enough airfield, they move. Maybe I didn't have a close enough airfield the time it happened to me. I'll have to look into that. I don't actually know exactly what went on there. All right. So we're going to take care of this dude. Now watch this. This should be an overrun. Let's see what happens if I kill him. Overrun, which allows you to move again. So tanks have a special ability that if they kill something outright, They'll be able to use the rest of their movement and, in fact, will be able to attack again if they move next to another unit. So you can do a sequential overrun if you plan it right and kill three or four units with one tank. But what I'm going to do is take my bloody airfield back. All right, so I do not get to use these two. That is unfortunate. So let's use the strategic bomber. That's a bummer, too, because watch this. We're not going to use the strategic bomber right now because if... Uh, now, I don't know why that fighter is not going to counter. Usually, huh, I wonder if he's just not strong enough. Usually, if you attack something, unless that's a ground attack, that must be a ground attack. That That's a air. And I'm not familiar enough with that. That must be a ground attack. Because otherwise, it would attack me before I bombed its units if it was an air-to-air -air player, but it is apparently not. All right, that's cool. So we're going to soften those guys up. We've got them suppressed. Three. Attacking when they're in river bottoms or other vulnerable spots like marshes. If you are not in the marsh, we'll give you an advantage. But it doesn't look like a huge advantage. And I do want to maybe put some artillery on them first. So let's move the Sturmpanzer close. The beauty about the mechanized Sturmpanzers or artillery, the tracked artillery, it's usually a, a little less powerful then the toad stuff, but you can move and shoot. I can move and shoot with this, but I can only move one space. These get their full movement and still get to shoot. So let's go ahead and pop this on him. Got him up to a five suppression. So I'm actually going to move this better, 
more powerful unit, right? They've got 15 left. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see the numbers a little bit better. Okay, we should push them out. That's nice. And maybe we want to attack them with the armored car. That's for four and that's for three. You want to, you want to investigate a lot of that stuff? Like, all right, which, which one's going to hurt them the worst? I think I'll just use the armored car. Now, the problem with this is it. I'm going to attack. I'm going to win that. He might even run. I didn't win it that much. But I pushed him out. Now, the good news is I pushed him out, so I might be... There you go. These are all things you can plan or at least try to think about. What I was going to say is I'm in a vulnerable spot right there. But the good news is I pushed him back, so now this next Panzer can move up here and protect the armored car from being a counterattack, and we'll just keep kind of pushing these dudes back. So that worked out really nicely. All right. And these infantry have a special forced march capability. Look at that. Problem is you don't get to it. I guess you do get to attack. I didn't know if you got to attack. Well, let's see what happens here. Maybe it's a lower attack or something. Let's see what it says. Allows me faster additional one movement. However, force smart exhausting, so the unit needs to recover two turns before using it again. All right, well, there you go. It just has a cooldown. It doesn't do anything but negate your ability to use it for two turns. Good. Learn a new thing. All right, so we did this. Now, what I want to do with this unit is... I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to move into the fog war. Let's see if I run into something. I didn't. But I did find an anti-tank. Anti-tank guns are pretty powerful if you attack them in defense. They're not as powerful as an attacking force. So what I'm really going to do is just sit here and maybe he will be baited into shooting me or attacking me and he should have a worse initiative. They do have initiative in this game. All right. So I can force march this guy, but it doesn't help me much. Looks like you press it and you get it. You cannot unforce march. All right, well, there you go. <laughs> Unable. All right, so what I am going to do, though, with the force march is I'm going to position him right here on the other side of the bison because if something comes in here and attacks, the artillery is extremely weak. So now that I'm next to an artillery, if I get attacked, the artillery should be able to actually respond and help me so it can counter first. And now I'm going to move this toad artillery. These little truck symbols... So I can go that far and fire, but the truck symbol means I'm going to get into the truck and go. So what we're going to do with this is let's send him, send him up here. We're going to go support this Panzer, and this infantry is going to come up here to kind of clear this area out. But now you're extremely vulnerable. In fact, it's not even a truck. It's a horse-drawn carriage. Sure. <laughs> nice. We're going to go ahead and press the dots and... There's still some movement on the car. That's nice. Well, actually, I'm going to use that then. Let's push through. I can attack here, but I don't want to. We're going to just hold off on that, and we'll end the turn. Get to watch what the enemy does. So they had an armored car sitting up there I didn't know was there. He hits me. Their ground attack hits me. Their other ground attack hits and just tears up. Not great defense. And then the anti-tank takes on the tank, and they, they do a number on me there, fellas. So I'm, uh, I'm in a hurt in status right there. Unfortunately, this thing doesn't have enough range to move and fire at them. So the first thing we got to do is we got to handle some of these bombers. And their, their ability to take my, to take my uh, airfield there hurt me a bit because I wasn't able to respond to their bomber earlier. Honestly, what I really should have done was come up here and tore him up and decreased his ability. I thought I might get the kill, but that's and that's unfortunate. I'm not able to get that. All right. So now we're in a bit of a conundrum, fellas. <coughs> this armored car. All right. So let's put the Stuka on the armored car. The nice thing about the Stuka, especially early on, is it's going to be able to maul things like this. You get armor out in the open, and it's just powerful enough to start hurting it. We're going to hit this guy. All right. One thing you can do with armor, especially if it's a low strength like this, you can hit things and run. So that's what we're going to do. Here's my stronger one. We're going to come across here. Just position him to block if he's going to try to go after my lower strength guy. We got a seven. This is artillery, but we I don't really want to cross right now, fellas, because well, let's see what we can do here. Can we get these guys? There we go. 
So we can cover here, but unfortunately, if I, eh, you know what, we're going to take a chance. We're going to go here. Now, if you look at the hexes, unfortunately, if he wanted to, or if there's something else up here, it could come in from this way and get to my artillery right here. We're just going to hope that doesn't happen. And this is the part of the game where... Let's go ahead and just scout what we got going on here. Where it can be a guts call at some times, fellas. We're just going to push hard here. These are pioneers. These are the guys, they do not... They have a special power. You need a little information button down here below my icon there will bring this up. They have an actual special ability here. Uh, bunker killer, plus five against structures. Minesweeper clears minefield. All adjacent friendly units entrench at two times speed. Uh, they ignore enemy entrenchment. That is extremely powerful when trying to take on guys that are in entrenched like these fellers are. One thing you can sometimes do is bait the enemy. I'm going to actually come here in the truck. No, we'll do this. I was. Oh, these guys. Interesting. They jumped out. Okay. That's unusual. Usually you stay in the truck. Do I have a hero in these guys already? What on earth? See, I'm learning too. No? Huh. All right, I'm a little bit surprised by that actually, so I'm not sure why that happened. It may be because I didn't attack anything, but I don't know if I've ever. S hmm. I don't know, fellas. I don't know why I did that. I am not the expert of everything here. All right, we still have the bomber. Let's soften, soften up. Uh, this might take a little while up here. Let's soften this up for this infantry. So it made the odds a little bit better, but I don't like it. I'm not going to attack. I still need the thing I want to avoid right here is to have to is to have to use the replacement because that's going to use use up some prestige, right? So we're going to try to do this without without uh, reinforcing. I'll show you one reinforce towards the end because I'm not going to use this. This is just for the video right here. I'll show you what it how it works in just a second. We're going to try to do it though with as little of that as possible. Okay, the enemy air force is going to come back more than likely. Look at him, he did it. So he, I did bait him. He came out, he went after the arty. Arty counterattack, but didn't get anything. Now here comes the 10, he's going to tear it up. Ooh, all right. The enemy infantry tore up ours, and now here's the enemy tank. So they made a bit of a counterattack. Oh, they've got two of them, that's no bueno. Okay, we do a decent job of mauling him, and then out comes the AT which does not attack very well. All right. Now that works out pretty nicely, fellas, because now they are out in the open. Let's go ahead and just thump him. A little bit of a stun. We got a four with this. We have to think about this, guys. First thing I want to do, I think, is get rid of, or at least maul, this bomber. Gonna probably leave a guy on one again. The enemy will reinforce their units if you don't kill them, if they've got the prestige. So you're rolling dice a little bit if you leave them alive. Sometimes if you if you if it's been going on for a while and you've worn them down, there may not be a lot of prestige. However, if you're on a higher level, then there may be a whole bunch of prestige available. So that's something you need to take into account. I generally try to kill things off if I can. It seems to work out better. But we didn't manage it this time, and I don't have anything else to attack by air or air attack. Let's see. We have to be careful with what we want to do with this guy. Look, we can't reach these two. We will have to rebase. The way you do that is right here. You click that and then the yellow ones are where you can go. <clears throat> and I am outrunning my basing. I need to take this airfield up here. So for the moment, I'm just going to have to accept that I can only deal with these guys here, which is fine. I think we're going to fall back from these tanks because we need to deal with this all this mess that's going on here. So we can do three of him or three of him. Let's blast the AT because he's a stronger unit. Now maybe we can get some 
overrun here. Let's see what happens. Hmm. All right, anti-tank guns will support the units next to them, especially if it's armor. You see that little red thing? That means he gets to attack me as well if I attack his recon. So I'm just going to do this. Maybe I'll get lucky and kill it. I didn't. That's unfortunate. We're going to hold off because I'm going to take... Oh, no, I can't come through. Problem here is the zone of control. The bridge is here, which means I would go from here to here, but I can't move out of this spot. Plus, this tank's here now. So what I need to do is move out of the way. Now I can move this guy around, and we'll go ahead and attack this armored car. That's unfortunate. That did not go as well as I would have liked. Maybe I can move him. Hmm. All right, we need to get rid of these guys. Pushed him out. That's good. I'm going to put one attack on him. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to kill this armored car off. All right, very good. This is anti-aircraft. If you put a airplane of yours within that red circle, he'll be able to attack it. If you attack anything that it's guarding in that red circle, uh, it will shoot you first before you get your shots off. We're just gonna fall back. I wonder if my armored car can work on him. Look at the armored car is actually better than the Panzer II C thing. So let's do that. Let's put a hurting on this guy. Very nice. Let's see if we get lucky, fellas. No, we did. I didn't lose anything. I think we got one of him. That's fine. Let's move back a bit. That'll force them to make a decision. I think that's all we've got. He's four strength. Killed all this stuff. All right, we are actually going to move forward. There's no more enemy units, so I'm not worried. I think there might be some more armor left. There's two of them there. I don't remember how many are left on this map. We are going to take a chance. We're going to move forward so that we can next turn move one and then hit this with our artillery. Here's the towed artillery. Unfortunately, it is already moved. And we actually have a bomber that I was not smart enough to use. However, everything is out of its range now. All right. No, oh, don't do that. One thing you can do, let's say you've got a... I'm not going to do it because this, this guy will shoot me, but if you have some area that still has fog of war, you could fly these airplanes into it and it will uncover. You're not going to do anything else unless you happen to stop on top of something. All right. We did not capper, capture Kilsey. Yeah, if you capture Kilsey fast, see he tried to attack. This is why the this is why the AI is dumb. The AI is trying to attack my Bison Sturm Tiger, Tiger thing, and I happen to have a fighter right next to it. At this level of difficulty, it does things like that. Presumably, I guess it probably doesn't do that in other level of difficulties. Don't know. All right. So we need to take this airfield so our air power can do something. Uh, infantry is better against air-to-air -air guns generally than armor, although this is giving me a 1 to 3. Let's All right, let's do this. We're going to get an overrun. All right, we killed that. Overrun. Now I get to move again. I'll show you that. And I get to attack again. Fantastic. So that's one of the strengths of armor. All right, I made a mistake there, and this is one of those things I get moving fast, and I sort of forget. I should have done this and softened him up before I did the attack. That was dumb. I don't think I can actually get there. No, none of my ten, none of my aircraft have range, so we've got to wait till we take this. And we're gonna be able to push this guy off, I believe. There we go. All right, now we can take the airfield. Killed it. Fantastic. So before I forget, I'm going to reposition, rebase. Oh, this is annoying, by the way. <laughs> this is a dirt airfield, I'm guessing. Yes, dirt airfield. So it's unfortunately your strategic bombers can't go to dirt airfields, but your fighters and your Stukas can. They also can only carry so many aircraft, depending on the size of them. Generally, it's 
filled around the, the all the hexes and the hex of the airfield. All right, well, that's kind of annoying. Let's then bring our infantry down this way. We're going to bring all of the artillery. Let's go ahead and take this. We'll work on this for killing off the helpers down here, and then this infantry will, will be ready. I don't want to go here because I don't want to give their infantry an easy attack on me. If they want to attack me, they're going to have to come out of their entrenchment. So that was the that was the thought there, and I actually got a kill. Armored cars do not have overrun capability. I'm just going to hold here. Okay, I'm going to move one for. I'm going to move one forward. The reason I'm doing that is that extends my zone of control here. If he wants to try to get to this truck, he's going to have to go around, and I don't think he's got the movement to do that. I could cross the river, but I feel like if I come across here, I might be vulnerable to whatever might be lurking around. And, uh, and right now, I'm defending against somebody crossing out of this unfavorable terrain, the river bottom. So we're just going to hold this right now. And I'm only at strength five, so that's no bueno. So this is an example of kind of going through. I can't use him. I don't have anywhere to put him. He can't attack. This guy, I want him to stay. I don't want him to move. Uh, this guy, let's pull back one here. And that's all we got, fellas. So let's go to the next turn. Remember, the enemy only seemed to have two aircraft. They both came out and attacked, and they both died. I kind of blew it here, though, fellas. Let's go ahead and force march these guys. There's a, they're only five strength, and I'm trying not to use replacements. I forgot to grab that flag, so there's some prestige we want to get right here. We don't want to leave that on the board. Let's swing him around and put... Oh, look at that. They used their prestige. So he repaired that, put a shot onto him. Interesting that... Now I'm a, oh, they must have, they must have used worse recruits in here. Let's talk about that for a second. The star system down here, you can see that it's starting to fill in as I get experience. It's up to five stars. So as you get more experience, they get more kills. You play them longer. They, they are persistent from mission to mission. They'll get more powerful. The stars will help. It gives you accuracy and accuracy to enemies attacking. So these guys are starting to get a little bit better. He probably got worse recruits, so that decreased his ability. Not a bad idea to go here. The problem with this is now I'm in the forest, which gives me a much worse defense capability. If I go here, I'm asking that infantry to attack me. That's a hard one, fellas. Let's see. Let's go ahead and actually soften him up with the Stuka. Perfect. I want to get rid of their mobile aggressive stuff. All right, I'm going to take the chance here because I have a chance to kill them. Watch this. This is cool. No, it's not cool. We did not kill him. That is very unfortunate. My hope was that he died and I got overrun and I could move back, but I didn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we did not kill that tank yet. That is a bummer. All right. Now we got to figure out how to take this on. We'll go ahead and move the infantry close. So we didn't know it was there, and now we do. I'm going to move the tank around the flank. I'm going to move the other tank around the flank. I'm going to move one forward. Bummer. Not quite enough. All right, we'll get this artillery close enough, and we'll put a shot on him. Got a fighter. So... Let's go ahead and use the 10 strength. This will reduce entrenchment. A fighter is good for at least one entrenchment. All right, here's an example that I was talking about, fellas. I don't have anything for this airplane to do. Let's go see what is here. All right, they've got an artillery piece, some infantry. I don't know what's down here, but that uncovers it. Scout cars. Airplanes, there's an airplane called the Storch, which is an observation plane, has a really lot, really far field of vision, are useful for figuring out what's out there because you can get overextended, not realize they have a stack of tanks sitting somewhere and get counterattacked, and it can be very painful. I think this guy's out of the game, to be honest. I don't know. This may, oh, this is a good field. We might be able to reposition it to this field a little bit later, but for now, he's not doing anything. All right, we've got an 11 on him. This is my Pioneer Infantry, so we're just going to move them forward. I don't want to put the truck, 
I don't want to put him in the truck right to here. Let's see what happens, actually, because... See? Oh. Do pioneers just do that? Now I'm confuzzled, fellas. Now I'm confuzzled. Do they automatically deploy? Huh. All right. I'm going to have to look into that because I'm not sure what's going on there. Something I am unaware of. All right, that's a four and three, and they got 14. Let's not do that. We need to uh, soften them up a little bit more. Stuka is going to be doing some business. I think we're done with what we can do, fellas. Yep. All right, let's let the enemy go. They attacked my pioneers and, and torched them pretty badly down to six. That's not good at all. So let's hit the artillery with both of these. Boom, boom. We're going to grab that. Got us some more prestige. Let's get the Stuka. We need to... Oh man, these dudes are in good shape too. we got to start hurting these guys somehow. See if the armored car... Look, they, they, keep, they keep repairing this tankette. All right, we're gonna head down this way. We've got to we've got to track this guy and get rid of him. Let's come around this way. Maybe I can actually grab the airfield. All right, good. I'm taking a bit of a chance. I think they're gonna attack my pioneers again. I may have to reinforce the pioneers. My, you know what? This is a good time because I'm not gonna use this one. Let me just show you how this works. You can use regular replacements. That is going to decrease your experience level. So strength plus seven costs 103. Or elite replacements going to cost 193, but also plus seven, and it keeps your experience at the same spot. So let's just do that. Now notice that it cost me prestige, and so you can see it doesn't take many of those before you're out of prestige, guys. But we'll just do that to get these dudes plussed up. Maybe they can do a little bit better job taking these guys on. And the armored car does not have enough energy to, or enough movement, but we're going to do this. All right. So we've softened them up. Let's put the fighter on this. And we'll put a fighter on this artillery. Artillery is a good thing to take out if you can to reach back to either use your artillery or air power. Because remember, if you attack the infantry that is next to it, you're getting an artillery barrage before you get in. So the faster you can kill them, the better. We did not get that airfield yet. That's an even. We're not going to do that yet. This is a four. All right, let's go up here. We're going to try to... Oh, no, let's not do that. I just noticed they've got a 15 infantry, so we're just going to kind of sit here. Maybe we can bait them out. If we pull them out, we'll take the chance that they do some damage to us. This is good here because I'm going to try to slow down where this dude can go, and I can run in maybe and put a hurting on the artillery. Although I am probably in the artillery's range here, fellas. All right, let's see what happens here. Yep, look at this. Because I was in the bloody forest, they came out and tore me up. I lost four. That's the stuff you got to watch out for, man. That was my best armor that was left. And kind of a mistake, to be honest. And they went ahead and repaired that artillery. So let's pound these dudes. Put artillery barrage here. AI is working me over a little bit, guys. This is not easy to... Uh, these are going to be difficult to kill. I'm going to get back into the open here. See if we can kill off this dude finally. No. Nope. All right. We should get the overrun. <laughs> can kill him again. All right. So we're minus two, minus four. Let's go ahead and see if we can start working on these guys. All right. That was all right. Not a, de not a great result, but it was decent. Whatever. Oh, see, I made a mistake again. I did not use the air power to reduce their entrenchment, and I got tore up. I lost that big time. Let's see if we can kill this guy with the air. That tankette, man, he was a thorn in my side, and I did not grab the airfield. That wasn't bright. I think we're just going to sit there. There we go. Now we can grab the airfield. That's why I use the little period to cycle around and make sure all of the units that you have have done something. We're going to rebase this down here. There we go. So we get our fourth airplane back into this. And we got another 
infantry. These are only a five, so we'll just run off, run in here. All right. Tough fight, guys. And this is the easiest level. Now, remember, I'm trying to just minimize the amount of damage that I take. And I, I don't know if I'm doing a great job of it. Some of you who are more experienced in this game are probably wincing at some of the decisions I'm making. That's fine. It's fine. Let's do this. Going to go ahead and soften this up. Zero and four, that's good. There we go, we finally push him out. Infantry in the open, easy to kill. Got him. Overrun, we're gonna run up here, we're gonna pound this guy, but we're gonna actually pause for a second. That move is still there, so you can unclick. We're going to bring the air power in and put a little bit of damage on him first. While I'm at, now oh, we already did that, so yeah, let's just soften this up. Gonna hit this artillery he shot back, didn't do any damage. We'll take that. We have an armored car now. Let's go after this artillery again, see if we can put the hurting on it. Now we don't want to do that, so I'm gonna get this tank out of here. We'll sit here. I'm not too worried about these fellas. Soften these guys up again. We'll go for broke. Boy, that's not going well for us, fellas. That is not going well for us. Down to six. Okay. Get them a little closer. We'll hang out with this one for a moment. This is a pretty good bait tank to draw them out. They might go for a kill, but I'm going to use it later. All right, next, next turn. Artillery goes after me. Look, these dudes came out and went after my car. He didn't do a bunch of damage, and this is going to hurt. I hope they don't kill it. And I'm encircled. Oh, I might surrender. No, I got away. Just very lucky, to be honest. So let's, uh, let's hurt this, because this is a problem right here. But the good news is that they've gone out into the open. Actually, let's back this up. Am I, am I able to kill this? Let's take a... So the, <clears throat> the problem here is if I can get lucky and kill it, I can overrun and come down here and hit them. If I don't, I don't get to hit them. Let's, whatever. This is an example. All right, see, that didn't work. So let's do this. Alternate plan. We bring the other artiller or the other tank in to take him out. Now we have this four. Whatever, we'll hit him in the open. Got nothing out. Oh, we got two. All right. And the armored car run away. That is unfortunate because I don't... Well, good. They're down to five. So, oop, this 14, though. This is a problem. And maybe it'll show you this because the last thing you want to do is lose your core units. Your core units, by the way, have the little arrow right here. There's a bit of an arrow. Because there are no not core, your support units, you don't see the ones. But the little chevron means it's a core unit. And I have forgotten about this infantry. They can attack here. Boy, this is a tough... There's some tough poles right there, man. Six to eight. All right, we don't want to do that. Let's get... How are we dug in? There's still three of eight. Well, that didn't hurt their digging in at all. It did nothing. All right. Let's hit this. That got them down to eight. Surprise. All right. And the bomber. Well, I'm a Muppet. Whatever. See, this is the thing. This is another thing in this game is that if you organize it right, and this is why I'm having trouble with it, you, you got to figure out which thing needs to hit first and then which thing needs to go second. And I get going so fast, I forget things like that. Like that would have been great to put over here to soften this one up that I'm going after right now, but I... Forgot about it. Use the fighter, which doesn't do as well. And there you go. So I think I'm going... Now let's just... Maybe we can bait somebody to come out. I'm not too worried about them attacking the six. So they go back into the forest. And then they attack my pioneers. We hurt them a little bit more. That's good. We're at turn 11 of 15. So we're getting close. 
We need something to start happening here, guys. I'm gonna pound this. Let's put this here. All right, we pushed them out. I like it. All right, so they advance. I'm going to advance the artillery right there so that if they attack, then the artillery will get a shot. I'm going to push into... Now, crossing rivers is a pain. You usually get only able to move into it. We're just going to sit here. I don't think they can get to it, so that's good. Let's, let's march them to here. All right. Now... Cleanup time. We'll harass this retreating artillery or infantry, and I don't get anything out of it. That's a bummer. Let's go ahead and reduce this thing's entrench. Actually, yeah, we'll reduce that thing's entrenchment. We're gonna probably have to use some. We're probably gonna have to use some. Uh, let's back that out. More replacements because we're gonna need we're gonna need our infantry replaced to do any kind of attack here. I'm going to try to bait them into attacking my armor. Hit this guy. Encircled is good. Gives them negatives. I think we're done. Remember that when you attack, you cannot reinforce. So you have to have, be, have been unmoving. So at the beginning of the turn, you can reinforce. And then you lose your movement. I'm just going to run these guys away. I don't want... Oh, see, I don't want to do that. All right, we'll just go there. This is blocking them from getting to my artillery. See if they attack me or not. Okay, the enemy didn't do anything. Oh, gee. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's a bummer. All right. These guys have been tough, man. I have I have got some unlucky rolls. All right, finally got rid of these guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to elite, elite replace these guys and bring them back up. That was an, another 193. See, so again, you can see how fast you can lose. How fast you can lose your, your uh, prestige. You can burn through it so quickly. All right, let's start hitting these guys. Let's use the bomber on these guys. There's nothing else on the on the board right now. I just can't attack, so I'm gonna have to bring these dudes in next time. Okay. Get the artillery closer. And I think that's it. All right, next turn. Boy, we're getting close, dudes. This is taking a lot longer than the last time I did it. I don't. I may not make it without using without using uh, the reinforcements. I think I've kind of screwed myself. Yeah, definitely screwed myself. It's bad. <laughs> We're just throwing everything at them, man. We got to get these guys out of here. I don't think it's going to matter. Oh, man. That's it, fellas. We have air power, but we can't use it because there's nothing, nothing we can get to. <laughs> All right. They attacked, which helped us. It definitely hurt us. All right, can the Stuka do any damage to these guys? Yes, all right, we're gonna soften these dudes up. Gonna hit him. Gonna hit him. We're just gonna, if we get lucky and push him out, great. If not, we're gonna have to move out of the way. There we go. Okay. Killed him. Good. All 
All right, wow, man. Okay, these are all close. Okay, so let's take this. Everyone's more or less close enough to make an attack. Down to the wire, fellas. I was hoping he might, I might bait him into coming out. So let's do this. Do this. Three. Attack. Pushed him out. Look at that. That, that was close. That's as close as it gets. Turn 15. We've captured everything. Let's see if we can get some more experience on these guys. One thing to think about before. So if you grab the last, the last primary objective, that's unfortunate. It didn't kill any of them. Then it's automatically over. So we're going to do this. Boom. And victory. Only just. So it took about an hour. I did a lot of talking. You can move through it faster, but that's not, that's not unusual for a mission. Probably the medium sized ones are a good hour without as much talking and explaining as I was doing. The more difficult ones might be an hour and a half. The easier ones might be more like 30, 45 minutes total. You get a little, I don't know, victory panel right here. Kills to losses ratio. Points killed cost. I haven't really dug through all of this stuff. No heroes, no medals. You can review the battlefield, kind of look at what's going on. Hit the turn thing, and off you go again. I think this is going to the next mission. Well, yep, there you go. All right. I got a hero, so no retaliation. This is actually a really good one. It means you can attack and not be responded to. Not on defense, but on attack. I put that on tanks. You can attack and they don't respond. It's extremely powerful. So he's a hero. Basically how you do this is you click on that. Click on the tank you want to put him on. It's a signed hero. You do that. You click there and now that dude has a little marker there and that hero is with that tank. Notice they're all beat up, right? They have the strength they had when they left. I have 2,672. Let's do all elite replacement before we go just to kind of show you in between or after the mission. We'll go through some of this real quick here. But watch how much prestige I lose. We're down to 2,500, 2,200, 2,100, 2,000, 1,900. This guy only had one strength left. 1,800. Boom. Boom. And just like that, we're down to 1,600 prestige. You can upgrade. There's an upgrade button right here, or you can plain, plain buy, which is purchase up here. Notice that I now have 36 of 45 slots. That means I have open slots. I have nine open slots. If we take a look, we can see right here the slots that new unit would take. So four of the nine I have left if I want Pioneer Infantry. Break, break. When you get infantry, make sure you click on the truck. The truck is zero slots. There's some other equipment later, like uh, they're half tracks that cost extra slots. At least give them a truck. There's no reason to, to not give them a truck. It's a little more expensive. Um, I suppose there is an argument that, and unfortunately you can't make the, oh, there you go, X. There's an argument to, if you're gonna have wear infantry, it's only three slots and they have the force march, which gets it to a four movement. On some of the closer maps, they might not need a truck. And the truck is another 105, almost the same amount of prestige as the guys themselves. So when you're talking about struggling with prestige, that may be that may be the uh, the call right there. I don't think there's any upgrades available. So infantry, tank, recon, anti-tank, anti-aircraft, artillery, fighter, tactical bomber, strategic bomber. And it doesn't look like there's any upgrades. However, I do have some bad tanks. So if we do this and we come over here to say the Panzer 1B, which is a fairly basic tank, and I click Upgrade. You can see all the different tanks I can get. This is the best one, I would say, the 35T or the 35TA. If I click on this, down here in the bottom right, it says that it's going to cost me one more slot and 80 prestige to upgrade. So we'll upgrade him. Prestige goes away and a slot goes away. Let's upgrade this guy to a 38T. I'm going to leave this other one. It's uh, Yeah, that brings them all to TNAs. 
There are no trucks involved with any of these guys. That's not true. The Pioneers have a truck. These two don't. Maybe I don't need those. I'm talking about trying to save prestige, right? Sturm Panzer is kind of garbage. You could upgrade that to say, now oh, this is really nice. This is a big cannon, man. 21 centimeters. I find the 15 centimeters to be pretty powerful. It's going to cost me no extra uh, slots, but 50 prestige. So let's go ahead and get a 15 centimeter. And I'm going to actually upgrade this 7.5 to a 15. I just find them way more useful. I'm also giving them a truck. And just like that, I'm down to 1,200. So as you can see, as you go through the upgrade stuff, holy cow, I have six slots. So probably what I would do here is I would grab another Stuka because they are extremely good. That's going to be 150 and three slots. That leaves us three slots. Probably don't need any more air. And why not another tank? Because this is Panzer General after all, right? So we'll come over here to purchase. Look at the tanks. We'll take an NA and we'll purchase that bad boy. And we've been just a little bit uh, spendy with our money, guys. We got uh, 865 left to reinforce guys in this next mission. Now you can see this is not a very big... Not a very big mission. Also, I don't have any extra troops here, so I don't think they start for another few missions right there. I do have a rail transport. And there you go. Panzer General. That was a really long video, but I hope you enjoyed that. Honestly, if you've not tried a game like this before, if you're older like me, it's it's easy to get into a uh, into a rut and not try new things. You know, if you've been playing World of Tanks or whatever forever, Go on to Steam, grab Panzer General or Panzer Corps 2. Give it a try, man. It's, it's very relaxing. If you find yourself frustrated, the prestige thing's pissing you off, set any prestige, put a million if you want, and then you can do the reinforcement as you're playing the game. It'll make things much nicer, and you'll learn more about the game in terms of the maneuvering, the things that the units can do. <clears throat> there you go. That's all I got, man. Have a good one. See ya.